Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Providence. I'm Marshall Secliff in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen, and we are all set for the finals where we've got Wang Yi Chen playing against Seth Manfield. Seth, clearly the more experienced professional player here out of the two, but Wang just had to get through Osip. Yeah, he just he had just... to beat Osip to get here, a Pro Tour champion on his way in the top eight, so he has not had it easy himself. Now, as it turns out, we've got the black, green, delirium mirror. Now, the two lists are a little different from each other, but it is the black, green, delirium deck against another black, green, delirium deck. And it's not shocking to hear that, as there were four copies of it in the top eight here in Providence, um, but still, it's really performed well. Yeah, I mean, this deck has proven itself to be amazing. I've been so impressed with this deck. I played a lot with it on Magic Online. I think I was saying yesterday that the moment I started playing with this deck, I found it really hard to play anything else because it's just so much fun. You have so many different angles. It allows you to catch up when you're behind. Uh, definitely one of my favorite decks in the format, if not my favorite deck in this new standard format. Um, there's a big difference here between Wong and uh, Seth's decks, though. Uh, Wong is not playing Grimflyer and is instead playing Sylvan Advocate. Whoa, that is yeah. different. Which is a very interesting take. Uh, the other big difference we're going to see here is that Wong has access to three copies of Tireless Tracker. And most of the other lists are playing one, if any at all. Well, Seth Manfield says, all right, well, I've got a Grim Flayers. Yeah. Like now, he's already got one on the battlefield here, ready to rumble. The one thing that's nice uh, Nothing about from Wong here? Okay. Sylvan Advocate is that it actually wins that fight against Grim Flayer when it's actually turn two. So if there's not a removal spell involved, the 2-3 body will be able to trump that 2-2 body. So pre-delirium, Sylvan Advocate is bigger. And then once you get enough lands, Sylvan Advocate again becomes bigger. Of course, not quite as strong at enabling Delirium. All right, here is a Pilgrim's Eye now from Seth Manfield, who's sort of slowly working his way up the chain. He had a Grim Flayer on turn two, but picked up some dead weight, found itself in the graveyard. Then a Traverse also hit the yard for Seth. So he's already halfway to Delirium. He's working his way up as we speak. Indeed. And he's also going to fire off this Grim Flare into the red zone, though Wong has none of it. He's going to play Grasp of Darkness on it to send it to the bin as well. So, Yeah, and there's Seth, a card, Grasp of Darkness, that has been incredible in this new standard. It's been good. Just probably the best removal spell in standard right now. Yeah, it has to be, right? Okay, here's Transgress the Mind. And he hit a Murder or an Ishkana that he can take. There's also a Grasp of Seth's own, though no threat currently to fire it at, and a Forest, which he can't take. So Ishkana is going to get exiled. Not bad, not bad. And looks like Wong used to, uh, wants to leave up the Vessel of Nascency mana here so that he can be mana efficient as well. He's not facing any pressure right now, just a little Pilgrim's Eye. And he's got to feel good about his spot. I mean, Seth just has a Pilgrim's Eye in play and reactive cards in his hand. That's right. Yeah, and as such, Seth says, well, I guess I'll just attack with my Hissing Quagmire, too, then. Get you for three. He may as well. Yeah, he may as well. He's not fooling anybody. And Wong's just going to take it, drop down to 17, and then crack that vessel on end step. Let's see what he hits. Ooh, he's got some choices here. See a Kalatas there, as well as a Hissing Quagmire. Yeah, now the th thing about Kalatas is while it is an extremely powerful card, he's playing against Seth Manfield, and he already cast Transgress of the Mind and saw that he's leaving Seth with a right. Grasp of Darkness and a Murder. So Kalatas not matching up great against those cards. That's right. So he's going to take a Liliana instead. Which is great in this spot. Looks fantastic. Though he would like one way to interact with his opponent's creatures because, well, Seth has to tap out, but he gets, does get to attack for three. Or at least two, I should say, because probably Pilgrim's Eye goes away. I would assume that Wong wants to pick off that Pilgrim's Eye here. And 
there she is, Liliana. Kill the Pilgrim's Eye. By the way, still no delirium there for Manfield. There's a traverse the Ulvenwald for Wong. This is interesting because Wong has to be pretty happy if Seth's play is, okay, fine, I'll animate my hissing quagmire and attack Liliana. It's, that's going to take forever to get Liliana dead. Another two turns, and uh, Wong gets to just generate value. Well, Seth does nothing. So not a bad spot here. And Seth, uh, we know he has two reactive cards in hand, neither of which interact with that Liliana. And he's, he is, in fact, firing up the... Okay, well, there's a decent draw. He fired up the Hissing Quagmire, attacked for yeah. two, but that left him a land drop and just enough mana to play Grim Flayer, which, again, is still on 2-2 two -two mode. He's got Sorcery, Artifact, Creature, but he's one short from Delirium. But still, nice little threat. I feel like Wong's pretty happy with this situation, though, because he's able to get that Grim Flare down to zero power now with his Liliana, the last hope. And I believe he has an instant speed removal spell that he will then be able to use to get the land off the table. Well, it looks like he just used it to kill the Grim Flare. Interesting. Maybe he has another one. Does he have a be pretty Quagmire disastrous. of his own? He does have that as well. He yeah, could so trade he Quagmires. Could trade Quagmires. Interestingly, that would get Seth to Delirium. He also could just have another removal spell and just sort of dare Seth to fire up that quagmire here. It's pretty bad for Seth if he goes animate, attack, and Wang's like, sure, grasp that too, murder that. Yeah. It sets back Seth pretty significantly. Yeah, because then Wong is able to start using Liliana to actually generate cards. Right. And when Seth has these one-for-one -one removal spells in his hand, if your opponent is generating free cards off a Planeswalker that's just sitting in play... You could just overpower that. Yeah, you just eventually overwhelm them. Oh, Seth doesn't want to do this. <laughs> he's very <laughs> hesitant, but he's going to do it. Let's see if Wong does have a, another answer or if he's just going to have to have Liliana take two or if he wants to trade off for his own... Hissing Quagmire. Interestingly, Seth, with all of these basic lands, is not able to leave up a Grasp of Darkness mana to even threaten that. And it, it looks, looks like, like Wong may just want to trade here. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. Wong also has... Ah, he has To the Slaughter in his hand. Which is pretty nice. Um, he also has Emrakul, Promised End, in hand. Ooh. And if we've learned anything about these green-black mirrors over the course of the weekend, it's that games often end when that card is cast. Absolutely. We have seen that very consistently. Yeah, so I'm going to get this Kalatas back to hand. And he knows that Seth has two removal spells to deal with this, but that's fine. I mean... Now he, he just got that card for free off the Liliana, so he's going to get to trade basically Seth's whole turn because Seth only has two black mana for a card that he was able to just put into his hand by pointing at his Liliana last hope. That's right. Yeah, not a great position here for Seth. Does find a third black mana. Okay, well, now that he's got Delirium, thanks to that Hissing Quagmire dying, he's going to play Ishkana, and that's pretty nice. Yeah, that is pretty nice. I mean, the one issue is that he is allowing his opponent to untap with Kalatas. That is an issue. Yeah. That and, is uh, an issue. That can often cause some big problems. Even this Blighted Fen can be an issue. Yeah. Starting to get Kalatas rolling. That seems like a pretty nice one in this format that we haven't seen much of. Yeah, Blighted we haven't seen it this weekend. Take a look at Blighted Fan if you remember that one. Uncommon. From BFZ. Nice little spell land. Yeah, Time that thing right, something. and you can get something very significant with it. Now, you do get to play these things. That the, well, they're only playing two colors in this deck, and we've seen decks that are three and even four colors this weekend. They can't really afford to play cards like Blighted Fen or even like a Westvale Abbey, those type of cards. But uh, 
you know, when you when you stick to two colors, you can reach out a little bit and play some colorless lands like Blighted Fen. All right, so Kalatas attacking now. And uh, if I'm Seth, I pretty much assume that there has to be some sort of instant speed trick up long sleeve here. So Seth is deciding, do I want to force him to use it here? Yeah. Or do I just take it or maybe just chump with the spider? Or None of these options feel very good to me. No, and I mean, the pr problem also is that if Wong does have some sort of removal spell, then he's also going to be generating zombies. Right. On the Kalatas. Oh, yeah, this and is just bad. And it kind of stretches Seth's resources pretty thin because, you know, his hand's just full of these spot removal spells. And while those can get Kalatas off the table, then there are just going to be zombies left over that do a good job of giving Wong the time he needs to cast his Emrakul, the promised end. Seth is at 20 life. He absolutely could just take the hit here. You know, his life total is not under immediate pressure, but he knows that he, he can't just do that forever, so looks like he's lining up a block. All right, well, he's just like, look, I'm going to assume you have a removal spell, and you're going to get me if you do, but I'm going to minimize the damage not throw away an extra spider or two in the process here. Ooh, is this just a bluff? Just traded for a spider? Yep. Wow. Cannot say I saw that coming. Wong's deciding what he wants to target with Liliana. Was he bluffing? I think he was. He probably thought to himself, okay, well, oh, I mean. He already had a creature in the graveyard, right? That wasn't him trying to work up to delirium. Oh, maybe maybe he didn't have a creature in the graveyard. I, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. It's hard to see from this angle. I would assume that he already did, but there's a chance he didn't, which makes sense. Not even, he hasn't played a creature yet, has he? Maybe not. Yeah. All right. Well, then that makes good sense, right? He needed to get to Emrakul this turn. And it worked. It did. Oh, wow. So the draw step for Seth Manfield, the turn that Wang Yichen is, is controlling, was another grasp, and his hand is three removal spells. Yeah, I mean, he only has two black men at the ready, though, so... I think he has three, right? Yeah, well, only enough to cast one of these spells. Sure, right? they're all double black? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, so. he's going to murder Ishkana. Eat a spider with Emrakul and pass the turn back. I mean, as it sits, Seth really has nothing going on here. Even combining multiple <laughs> removal yeah. spells doesn't get the job done here. Yeah, and I mean, Emrakul has, actually has protection from instance. Yeah, I can't even touch anyway. Like, he's that far away. Well, he found a Mind Rack Demon. That doesn't do anything anyway. Yeah, not, not very exciting here, Mind Rack Demon. No, Emrakul could clean this up in two turns if Seth doesn't come up with something and very, very quickly. Yikes. Wang Yichen doing good work here in the finals. On the verge of earning game one against Seth Manfield. Ooh. That's a pretty good pickup, Tireless what did, Tracker. Where did he get a Tireless Tracker? It's nice. He knows Seth has plenty of removal spells that are going to deal with that, but the nice thing is that he can play it alongside a land, and it doesn't give Seth an opportunity to use a Grasp. Obviously, on this turn, Seth doesn't have the mana, but um, in future turns, and he can start using different ways to get back the Tireless Tracker, and each time he does that, he's going to be generating a card, whereas Seth's going to be spending a card and not getting anything for it. Yeah. You notice how many times we've said that about what he yeah. has been doing this game? No kidding. So Emrakul, the promised end, gets in for the full 13, dropping Seth down to seven. And there's a tireless tracker and the land. He still has Liliana. I would expect that Liliana ticks up targeting a demon. You called it. This could be the last draw step of game one here for Manfield.
I mean, even a uh, grasp of darkness now for Wong would be good enough because he could get the spider out of the way and then use his blighted fen to kill the demon and then attack for lethal. Yeah, he actually only needs to get either creature out of the way anyway, and mm -hmm. then he's got lethal. But if, if Seth gets to block with both of them on Emrakul, he will actually just go to one. Uh, the Blighted Fen means that's probably not going to happen. Exactly. Now it got a little more. <laughs> they, they can now. That's true. They can. Well, Liliana's there. Clean yeah, so Liliana yeah. kills the Pilgrim's Eye. Yeah. Blighted Fen kills anything. The most toughness Seth can have is five, and he's attacking for 13 at seven. Mm -hmm. So negative one. Nice playing against you. And you can see how quickly Wang Yichen is playing. I think he sees the line here. Seth representing Grasp, but as you mentioned a minute ago, that doesn't do anything here. This game should be in the books. Oh, interesting. Wong just attacked, so he's actually going to give Seth an extra draw step, it looks like. Oh, wow. I mean, Wong realistically is so far ahead that it shouldn't matter, so he's going to sack this, but that's still seven, right? Uh. He's just going to do it all now. Okay. I, I don't think that's seven anymore, right? It's six. Put Seth down to one. Yeah, either way, though, Seth lives. Yeah, he could have just picked up the Liliana and end the game, but... But he did not see it. Okay, so this gets interesting now. Again, you know, Wong looks like he's in a great spot. It, it's not that. It's just uh, you really want to close the door against a Seth Manfield when you have the chance to close the door against Seth Manfield because, man, he will take advantage of any yeah. little edge you give him. Now... Passing the turn back here means he's dead. Yeah, I mean, the protection from instance part of... Yeah, it just rules out everything. So that means that Wong does, in fact, take game one. That extra draw step from Seth did not yield anything of consequence. And uh, because he had the advocate, it couldn't have even. Because mm. uh, even if Seth had an Emrakul of his own, he would just end up, you know, dying. Because getting, the, getting swarmed by two or three creatures and... Yeah, precisely. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for game one. Players are now going to consult deck lists and then get to their sideboards. You can take a look at our feature match area here. What excitement. It's very tense over there, by the way. It is. I, I, I really like to take a minute when I can, when I'm not in the booth, to go over there and watch the games for a while because it feels different from over here. You know, we're, we're 100 feet away. We're not that far away from them. But, you know, we got headsets on. We're looking at them on a monitor that's just a computer monitor like what you have at home. And it it feels different. You, you can sense, you know, I got to watch Osip talk a little bit to Wong. You know, nothing. He was just, you know. Just, Any needling? Yeah. You know, like at one point, <laughs> Wong was, was in the tank. He had played an Emrakul against the Red White Vehicles deck. So things aren't looking <laughs> great for Osip. And... He j he draws the card for Osip, you know, so he's looking at it and he's like poking around at his lands and kind of figuring out how he wants to, you know, destroy his board the best. And, and Osip's like, you done? <laughs> 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 like, and, and Wong's like, no, no, not done. <laughs> you know, like, we are not done here. <laughs> but, you know, Osip was joking with him, uh, of course. It gets really tense once you get down yeah. to these final rounds. Oh, it's huge. I mean, the winner of this match ten thousand dollars yeah and it's also just kind of an accomplishment you know and i know seth has won these before seth has you know but even having won them before you know it doesn't make the next one feel less important no it doesn't and the the, the interesting thing that i always like to note with this stuff jake is how hard it is to actually win a tournament yeah. Which sounds weird, right? I mean, it, you know, Seth's been playing Magic for years and years, and he's been playing at a high level. He's won three GPs and then also Worlds. But he's the exception. Most even very seasoned players, you know, don't have a lot of wins on their record, if any at all. Even some of the best players, you think of the best players out there, you know, and you look at their records and you're like, wait a second. 
You've been trying to win a GP or a PT. Those are the two high-level events, right? The two highest-level professional-level events for Magic. For 15 years, you have not won one. You know, which kind of makes yeah. me glad that we tend to judge things, you know, in terms of top eights and that kind of thing, because I think it's a more nuanced look at gaming. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's like, God, wait a second. <laughs> You've been playing Pro Magic for 10 years and you never accomplished your goal of winning a major tournament. You know, it's that rare. And these are not, you know, these are, all, these are I mean, look up some of your favorite players' resumes and you'll be like, wow, wait a second. It's crazy. It's crazy how hard it is to actually take home the trophy and win one of these things. Yeah, there are well over Seth a Manfield. thousand people. Yeah, there every was single one of these things. Push of, pushing 13. Yeah. Pushing 1,300 players here. And, and uh, only one is going to hoist yeah. up that trophy at the yeah. end. One person gets to go you home know, happy. That's one. less than a tenth of a percent of yeah. the people who showed up. Right. And even when you take into consideration that like a professional Magic player is going to have a pretty big edge over the field right you know if you're if you're half a percent if everybody plays exactly the same you know if you're a professional magic player what are you one percent one and a half percent i mean maybe you know you can quarrel about the numbers but you're not 10 percent <laughs> you know you're, you're not winning one in 10 gps that you play even if you've completely broken the format and your deck is unfair yeah, like that. You you made a deck that just beats the format. Silly, that you know nobody else has a better deck than you, and nobody else can play as well as you. You're still not hitting that ten percent number. No, not to win. Now the but like yeah. I said, the cool part about Magic is that I think early on Magic players realized that while winning is the ultimate goal and should be rewarded heavily, and it is. I mean, you get ten thousand dollars for first at a GP here. That's way way more than you're getting for eighth. Yeah. But we still recognize for the purposes of figuring out who's been successful over the long term, a relatively arbitrary number with eight, but still that does seem to work. I mean, you're still in the real upper tier of a 1,300 or even a 2,000 player tournament if you're in the final eight players. And that is a, a real significant accomplishment. And I, I'm always thankful that we look at it that way. Even though I will admit, I, I value wins very highly, like when it comes to Hall of Fame voting and that kind of stuff. You're here to win. Right. Like that's <laughs> that's the whole point of this thing is is winning a tournament. And we should reward people who who do that. I absolutely agree with you. Thankfully, so does Wizards. They're like here, ten thousand dollars. So yeah. <laughs> they, they also agree. The cool part, too. I, I the one thing I really like about this, uh, about the way that the top eights go is, you know, if, if you get into the top eight, you're qualified for the pro tour here. And, you know, for somebody like Seth, that doesn't mean a lot. He's well He's qualified. qualified. Right. But, you know, for Wang Yi Chen, he may not have been qualified coming into this tournament. And he gets to kind of stepping stone his way up where it's like, all right, sweet, I'm going to Dublin. You know, I saw Osip was tweeting, we'll see you in Dublin. He's really excited to be back on the yeah. Pro Tour. But there's I'm more work to do. I'm excited for him to be back on yeah, the Pro Tour. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah, and, I mean, it's worth noting that, you know, you've performed well enough here. Let's see how you do against the best players in the world. You know, you get that opportunity now. You've earned that opportunity. All right, we are ready for round, or excuse me, game number two. Seth Manfield on the play this time, which he was in the first game as well. He's the higher seed. Manfield came in in the third seed. Wong was actually the eighth seed, so he's not going to be on the play in any of his games. But that has not stopped him. And he's got a Sylvan Advocate to start things off, and a lowly Pilgrim's Eye here from Seth Manfield is not going to be doing a whole lot of blocking. I kind of like that, that he came in, he squeaked in the top eight and eighth. You know, was forced to be on the draw in every single one of his matches. It's, it's an aggressive format. Being on the play is very much rewarded, and it hasn't mattered. Here he is in the finals, up a game against a world champion, having just beaten a Pro Tour champion to make it to the finals. All right, Wong's going to kick things off with an attack for two, knocking Seth down to 18. What else does he have? Ooh, another Sylvan Advocate. Okay. This reminds me of last season's standard. A nice quick start here for Wong. And those two threes actually match up pretty well against what people are doing. Yeah. And Vigilance, I think, is you know, also understated in this format. Mm -hmm. The fact that those Thraven Inspectors that everyone is playing, like, you're not trading hits with those. Those are just brick-walled forever. Yep. 
Yeah, it was. It's a bold move from Wong. He's not playing Grim Flares in his Green Black Delirium deck. Instead, he's playing these Sylvan Advocates, but they seem to be performing pretty well for him. On the other side I'd of say. the table, though, Seth is the one. He is playing Grim Flares in his build. For what it's worth, I think the vast majority of people who play Grim Black De Delirium this weekend were playing Grim Flares. Absolutely. Like Wong is definitely the exception. He is. It, I don't think I saw anybody else on Advocates in the feature match, you know, th that we covered. Yeah, I saw some lists that were playing like one or two, and it's mm. probably just so they could have more two drops. I don't think it has much to do with, I don't think they thought it was better than Grim Flare, and are, are Wong they, definitely did. Are they at odds with each other when you deck build? Can you just jam four of each? Is it, yeah, Maybe you just do. I don't know. I don't know either. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, Seth, under assault here, he's actually going to fire off a block and then a murder on the other one. He's going to take zero damage this turn, though he did lose the Pilgrim's Eye, which is often not bad. That immediately got him delirium. He just put an instant, a creature, and an artifact in the graveyard to join the sorcery he already had, and boom, he's at delirium. Well, speaking of boom, here's a tireless tracker for Wong, who immediately plays a land. Yeah, and that's that's, that's another big difference between Wong's deck and the other Green Black Delirium decks we've been seeing. Most of them have one copy of Tireless Tracker, if that. And and how many is Wong running? Wong's running three copies of Tireless Tracker. Ooh. Yeah, and in a matchup like this, where a lot of it is just you know one for one removal, when you're playing Tireless Tracker and then playing a land, even if they kill your Tireless Tracker right away, yeah, you've already netted a card in that trade. And if they let you untap and play another land, then you're two cards ahead. And eventually they're going to have to kill it. So it just matters how many turns you've had it in play, how many lands you've had an opportunity to play since you've played it. Because each one you do, you're getting one card ahead in that card-for-card -card war that the Green-Black Delirium Mirror often ends up being. All right, Seth's been behind. Well, it's got to be said for most of this match so far. Game one, he found himself behind, never was really able to dig out, and then Emrakul will finish things off for Wong. Now Seth is again behind. You know, he's making plays. He's using up his mana. It's not like he's doing nothing, but you know, Pilgrim's Eye doesn't have a big effect on the board. It's kind of a, a slow card, and uh, Wong's able to apply some pressure here. Yeah, worth noting also that... Uh a lot of these green black mirrors we've been watching have really come down to who is able to cast the Markle of Promise then first. Sure. So even with Seth like yes. seemingly pretty far behind here, I wouldn't be surprised if he was able to cast the big spell first and win the game as a result. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that as we work our way through the game. Well, it looks like he's trying his hardest to keep the pressure up on Seth. Seth is maintaining his life total the best he can. We saw him chump block with the Pilgrim's Eye last turn, use a removal spell on one of the Sylvan Advocates. to remain at 18 life. So Wong here still, still deciding what he's going to get back there. Yeah, he decided to go for a hissing quagmire. Or maybe that's a marsh. Did he forget to make a clue? Yes. Ugh, Ugh that's a bummer, man. Travesty yeah, of value. I hate seeing that. Ugh, that's rough. He still has one from before. That was from the turn that he played the tracker. But yeah, I think he he whiffed on that one. Now we'll see if it comes back to bite him. Now this is a very high pressure match. I mean, here he yes. is. And he's playing against the world champion from last year. You know, it's not, it's not like he's you know he's just starting to sweat now. Last round, you know, he just had the. You know, the pleasure of playing against Osip Levadavich. Nobody makes you sweat more than that. Oh, yeah. He's, you know, he's talking to you. He's trying to put you off your game. And then you carry that into your next match. You know, it's not it's not something that you can just shake off that easily. No, no. He's, you know, Wong, when this whole thing's over, he can take a minute. I know he's got uh, his friends with him uh, are on the rail as well. But, yeah, he has not really had much of a break here <laughs> running through the gauntlet. And perhaps his hardest challenge yet Seth Manfield awaits. Seth is resolving a grapple with the past now, and as usual, is thinking about what he wants to do. It looks like he's found... Whoa. Swamp. Oh, he changed his mind. Grim Flare. But that's not going to affect combat here. He's still getting attacked for at least three damage, or excuse me, five damage. 
and he has to decide if he wants to chump. No, nope, he's not. And uh, is Wong going to sacrifice that clue, or does he have something else to do with the mana? No, nope, take five. So that's going to put Seth down to 13. Things are getting interesting here. Very much so. I mean, again, in a lot of ways, this matchup can be a race to a Miracle of the Promised End. And Wong, you know, missing an extra card in a matchup where everybody's playing grass and murder and all of this, that can be a real big problem if things go long enough. Yeah, you know, if Seth starts playing a bunch of Ishkanaz or whatever where it gets into true grind mode, an extra card can really come back and get you. Both players have an extra copy of Miracle of the Promised End to bring in for post-boarded games. You know, Seth brought in a couple of pick the brains against his last opponent, though his last opponent was not playing Black Rain. Oh, there's my guy, Noxious Gear Hulk. Love that card, and it's going to take down a tireless tracker and even yeah. put Seth back up to 15. So now Wong has something to deal with. Nice big 5 4 with Menace. Card's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I want an excuse to play more of those. Look, its arms are like scimitars. Oh, yeah coolest ever by the way the chat said i should go as noxious gear hulk for halloween this year all right well I you I said want pictures. no chat said yes i mean it just seemed like a lot of work to me <laughs> you know that's that's a difficult costume that's a lot of effort yeah, are you friends you're friends with christine right she yeah. could probably make it happen yeah i don't think i would do that to her she ha she worked so hard on her <laughs> on her own cosplays that like asking her to do another one's probably too much all right, well, this is pretty nice, and maybe a slight weakness when it comes to Noxious Gear Hulk. It does die to Grasp of Darkness. Now, yep. you can't be sad with that transaction if you're Seth. It was still a straight-up two-for-one, and a pretty important one as well. Though, eh, you know, when your two-mana removal spell kills your six-drop, that is a little bit of a bummer. In the meantime, Wang Yi Chen really asserting himself here. He attacked for four and played Liliana. And that's in two an empty board of Seth Manfield. Yeah, and not only that, but this Sylvan Advocate, now that it is bigger and badder, it's also pumping those hissing quagmires on Wong's side of the board, which means that he can make short work of Seth. Seth's dead in two turns. Yeah, that's a ton of power coming over. And what you see here is Seth digging through his graveyard, probably getting his full delirium count. He may have an Emrakul in hand already. And he's going to need it. Let's see what Seth has here. He's got options. I don't believe he traversed for it. And post board, he does have two copies. I'm sure he's bringing the other one here. Magic players that were in the Super Sunday series may please have Miles W. Jason this is clearly a very important juncture in the match here. Seth taking his time and really trying to plan out how the heck do I get out from under this pressure that Wang Yi Chen has me under. What's the game plan that's going to actually win him the game? And I think that game has got to involve and Rock Holden Protestant. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, here's a traverse let's go let's see if that's what he grabs you know another option could be to get an Ishkana. he has the mana to cast it right now yeah and i mean he might already have the big spell in hand true yeah so he's going to get an Ishkana now that doesn't necessarily tell us that he has it but it is a hint yeah and yeah, that is going to let him cast that immediately though i will say that wang yi chen has put together a pretty nice assault force here, especially when you consider that those hissing quagmires are going to be 4-4s. Four you know, it, it really does make like life difficult. Also, Death Touch pretty good against the little horde of 1-2 blockers. Yeah. Make sure that you clean those out. Liliana, not quite as impressive now. I mean, it, this game has really gotten gummed up at this point. Yeah. I'm curious to see what Wong's intentions are here. 
Looks like grapple is going to be the first thing he plays. Oh, there was a Nissa in there. Yeah. Kind of interesting. It's a pretty good card. Though, not able to grab that one with a grapple. He's going to get his own copy of Ishkana, though. Nissa seems really good in this matchup. As Planeswalkers generally do. Well, I can see Wong's hand pretty well. He does have an Emrakul in his hand, though it seems like he's a little far off from casting it. Perhaps Nissa got him another turn closer. Yeah, I mean, he is about to miss a land drop from the looks of things, too, though. Mm, okay. Which is definitely not where he wants to be. Murder Ishkana. Shrink down a spider. Attack for four. So Wang is just taking the grind approach here, just trying to whittle away at Seth Manfield's board. Seth looks like he may chump with the spider that got stared at by Liliana for a little too long. And there's Evolving Wilds for Manfield. Manfield has to be getting close to Emrakul here, right? I think this next turn is when we're going to see it. Do you think he has six types? He's already got seven lands. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. I mean, there's a Pilgrim's Eye in there, which gets one of the tricky ones. You see it's the Evolving Wilds. Sorcery and Instant. I don't know if you have an Enchantment or a Planeswalker yet, but... Yeah, we're at five. He needs an Enchantment or a Planeswalker, though, if he's going to cast it. He also could just play a land. That'll do. Let's see what Seth comes up with. You said it. You said, look, if he might fall behind in the early game, but if he can be the first one to resolve Emrakul, that could buy him the game right back again. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing about this matchup is that that big finish is oftentimes how this game will end. Yeah, such an incremental game leading up to that, and then it's just like <laughs> smash everything with an Emrakul. It's like the game show where... Uh, they're all the prior rounds you're trying to win, and you have to win them by a whole lot. <laughs> Otherwise, the last round just makes it. Yeah, it's always just the bonus round. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, that was not Emrakul from Seth. He's got to transgress the mine. Decent shot he doesn't have it in his hand yet. I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's definitely he a possibility. He could have got it with Traverse last turn, but decided to get, or two turns ago, but instead decided to get the uh, Ishkana. He might just need an eighth land also. We're not exactly sure the number of card types. But in this is a big deal because Emrakul, the promised end from Wong, just got exiled to that transgress. Seth slowly working his way to victory? Question mark. Grim Flare from before, and there's a vessel, and he's got the mana to crack it as well. So a very positive, fruitful, efficient turn there from Seth. But he is still facing down a Liliana as well as Sylvan Advocate with six lands. All right. It's going to plus Liliana. This is getting interesting. She's already at six loyalty. Yeah, I think is he's Is he just really going to take the defensive here, try to go for that ultimate maybe? I think that really should be his game plan at this point, especially if he has any. Like, he has Ishkana in hand. So he can kind of shields up. Oh, that gets really interesting. Just hide behind the spiders. And there are definitely things that can go wrong, but yeah. he doesn't have the big spell in his hand anymore. So he kind of has to hope that Seth doesn't have one either. Okay, there we go. Ishkana Graf Widow. I'll be over here with Liliana. And this, again, it, it reminds me of last season. No Emrakul's in that pile. So let's count here. Three, four, five, six. That is enough. 
He's going to pick the mind rack card. demon and let those forests go. Let's see what he's got. Uh-oh, this looks like an Emrakul. There it is, yes, Emrakul, the promised end. And this is going to get ugly here. Let's see what, what havoc he can wreak. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of creatures in play here, so. Yeah, this is going to get kind of ugly. There's a to the slaughter there from Wong, which dictates target player rather than target opponent. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I mean, and considering the Liliana. Right. So Seth gets to choose in that case as he's acting as both Wang Yi Chen and himself. So he can cast it, target himself. That is, Wang casts it, targets himself. And then he can also pick which ones to sacrifice, which would be Liliana and either the Graf Widow or the uh, Advocate. That's gross. That is completely disgusting. <laughs> that must have been what Wong was thinking about, whether he wanted to actually cast Ishkana. Because if this was going to happen, he could fire off that to the slaughter and have his hand be Ishkana land, but not get completely destroyed by this. Uh, this is a really cool line that Seth took here. So Seth animated the Hissing Quagmire, okay. then used the plus ability of Liliana to make it have zero power. Huh. Then he used to the slaughter to make Wang sacrifice the Sylvan Advocate and the Liliana. Now, because there's no more Sylvan Advocate, the Hissing Quagmire went from being a 4-4 to a 2-2, and because of the Liliana activation, it became a 0-1. So now he can just block that Hissing Quagmire with the Spider Token and kill a land from Wang, or Wong. So Wong Whoa. now doesn't even have access to Emrakul in his following turn if he wants to follow up and try to do the same thing if he draws one off the top. I do think that's what he wants to do. Wow. What did he find? A Traverse? That's pretty good, right? It is definitely pretty good. Is it good enough? I don't know if it's good enough. Like, can he set up his own Emrakul is what I want to know. You said he brought an additional one out of the sideboard, right? Yeah, I believe both players brought an additional one out of the sideboard. Okay, because remember, one did get exiled yeah. to a transgress the mind. It would very much surprise me if... oh. Ishkana. That's what he's searching up here. Well, that's not very exciting. No. Not when you're facing down a 13-13 flying trample. He's okay. out of cards as well. Seth Manfield at seven, but looking pretty stable and with a mighty attack force in the air. This is a gigantic monster that Seth has flying in here. And that transgressed the mind, taking the 1313 out of Wong's hand, giving Seth the opportunity to be the first one. And probably the last one this game to cast that card. It's looking pretty good for him. Yeah, Wong has a surprising amount of attackers on the battlefield, ex especially when you remember the hissing quagmires back there. So Seth does need to be marginally careful. And he's going to yeah, run through the that. scenarios now of, okay, if I attack with Emrakul, you draw a removal spell, kill my Grim Flayer, and still have mana to maybe fire up the hissing quagmire, then what happens? And he's decided, you know what, things look good. I'm going to attack, yep. drop you down to six, play, play a mind rack team, and yeah, and then pass the turn. It's just going to be incredibly difficult for Wong to get through. He may be able to survive another turn by throwing spider after spider in front of Emrakul. He's got a lot of toughness there with Reach, but... Yeah, 15 points of toughness to Reach on his side of the table. Yeah, but it just Only 17 points enough. of flampling power. <laughs> oh, you know what? Never mind. He's having none of it. Wong is just going to attack with everything. I think he figures, okay, this one's done. But there's really no downside to me just turning everything sideways. Let's see if Seth misclicks. Oh, wait. 
Um, does he have enough to activate Ishkana? He does. Is it enough to kill? Yeah. It is enough to kill wow. Seth, and I it is the I didn't game. See it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he had exactly yeah. enough with the, the land that he needed plus Ishkana. Wow, that was out of nowhere, and that yeah. does it. Man, I love me an Ishkana activation. That's a sweet way to win the finals. Of that America. was a sweet way for <laughs> Wang Yichen to take down GP Providence. That's going to do it for the finals.